Bing, bing, bing. All right, let's get to Aaron Rodgers. Okay, my man is my man is doing a great job. All right, Aaron Rodgers went on a podcast after getting COVID, and it, and it came out that he like wasn't vaccinated. Okay, he went on a, a podcast and talked about how he consulted the world's foremost medical experts. Yes, that's right, Toe Rogan. I am talking about Toe Rogan, dude. That's who he went to. He said he was immunized. And immediately everyone was like, immunized? Hold up. That's something that people who have not been vaccinated like to say when they themselves have at least like gotten COVID. So that's an interesting way to say that you have been vaccinated. Uh, what's up with that? Yeah. Turns out what's up with that is he has not been vaccinated. He just like, you know, had COVID already. There's a 47 minute I'm 40 hour, 48 hours in, and I consulted with a now good friend of mine, Joe Rogan, after he got COVID, and I've been doing a lot of the stuff that he recommended in his podcasts. Dude, this is the best, dude. This is the best. I'm sorry. This is the best thing, dude. Look at his face. He's like, what? Look at him. Stuff that he recommended in his podcasts and, you know, on the phone to me. And I'm for. It's like, what? Look, look, there's a moment where he goes, here. After he got COVID. Look at him. <laughs> he goes, he's like, what? It's so the, it's the funniest thing that anyone could ever say, dude. It's the best timeline. I can't wait for him. I hope he's a QAnon supporter. It's so funny. <laughs> I consulted my new friend Joe Rogan. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh my god. This is literally the what? meme posted on Joe Rogan on his Insta. That's the best part about this. The best part about this is that, remember? Wait, where is the Australian uh, meme that Joe Rogan thought was like a real thing? Not so MVP. Is this the part I'm going to take shit for, Ariel? You better hope that's the he only part. I consulted with Joe Rogan. Can we talk about that? <laughs> that not He's laughing. Oh, this shit is so hard as a Packers fan. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, I I've heard that Aaron Rodgers is dating like a crystal mommy. So, you know. You know how I feel about this, okay? I think she used to follow me on Instagram, but maybe not. Let me see, because I would never know otherwise. Yeah, no. Um, because I remember her. I remember seeing her like at uh, protests and shit. Charlene Woodley shared a quote about finding your power during storms after fiance Aaron Rodgers revealed he was unvaccinated, contract COVID nineteen. Woodley twenty nine apparently deleted the quote from her Instagram story a few hours after posting it. Calm seas may bring you peace, but storms are where you find your power, the diversion actress said on Instagram. Rogers quarterback for the Green Bay Packers revealed this week that he had tested positive for COVID and would miss Sunday's game against the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, you had me up until that point, buddy. But come on. I consulted with Joe Rogan. I consulted with the UPS guy. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, no. oh, UPS guy isn't oh, making, you know, like on. 80 mil a year. Uh, Okay, he is, dude, this is why everyone that understands fighting, uh, like everyone whose takes I respect that loves, uh, what's this dude's name? Ariel, right? Whatever his name is. Like, he's, he's smart. He's 100% correct here. And he's like, wait a minute, the UPS guy's not making $80 million a year. Dude, are you insane? What difference does it make when someone is making a lot of money? That doesn't mean they're like qualified to give you medical take a doctor's qualification on giving you like uh you know pro like accurately assessing medical research and communicating that to you does not revolve around their annual income dude i mean i know he's joking but still goddamn dude uh, <laughs> probably has access to a lot of the highest but i understand what yeah. you're saying i did i mean golly <laughs> you were you had us there for a second this is why i like ariel then and that is a terrible uh retort and then you start consulting with podcasters. Hold on. Come on. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So that is the, <laughs> hey, that's the, because you are a journalist, like actual journalist. You used to be. I don't know if you're wearing a luchador mask right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but you, is that probably what I'm going to take shit on, you think, for that? Because I actually immediately that, follow. 
you better hope that's the only part you take. <laughs> <laughs> golly. I mean, golly. Hey, have has Nick Khan called yet? I don't know if that's 8 p.m. start is on your schedule, <laughs> Daddy O. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what do you have? Let's I move mean, along golly. to what you know Man. about, please. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, golly, I have to sit here and listen to that. Hold on a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now, a man you might have heard of, the current reigning, defending, undisputed MVP of the NFL, Green Bay Packers quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Hey, Rod. Hey, Rod. hey, Rod. Hey, guys. How you doing? I'm, I'm good. First things first, uh, how are you doing? Is everything okay? Or how, how are the symptoms? Do we feel good? What's how are you doing? How are you doing? going on yeah i'm doing well i'm doing really well uh big thanks to everybody that reached out checked on me the last couple of days uh felt really good you know heard from so many teammates former teammates uh coaches members of the organization friends uh both yourselves thank you guys for that hey, no problem. Uh, so definitely uh definitely appreciate all the love and support okay good let's get right to it all right, I feel like uh, what we have been able to, you know, I don't want to say build with you in your incredible, you know, just how nice you are with your time with us every single Tuesday. People have learned a lot about you through this show, and I'm very thankful for that. Every Tuesday, I think a lot of thoughts were potentially changed about you. People that once thought something about you changed after hearing you speak. So whenever all this information came out, there was a lot of haters out there, obviously, that immediately started bearing you, but there was a lot of people that listened to you on Tuesdays that say, hey, he's actually an incredibly deep person, an incredibly intelligent person, uh, somebody that you would actually like. There has to be reasons for everything that we're hearing about right now. So I appreciate you so much for this incredible honor that we have uh, to potentially allow you to have a platform and a floor to explain your side of this whole thing. And uh, I can't wait he to hear it. We're incredibly lucky for it. The floor is yours, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I mean, did he call him deeply intelligent before he found out? I mean, tech, to be fair, they're friends. And also, he called him deeply intelligent before he found out that he consulted Joe Rogan for his ivermectin uh, treatment. You know what I'm saying? Like, so hard to, hard to stay consistent and be like, yeah, no, you're still deeply intelligent. When I find out, my friend is, uh, you know, getting medical advice from Toe Rogan. Uh, thank you, buddy. Um, good water, good water drink. It's going to be a I, real, I realize I'm in the crosshairs of the woke mob right now. So before oh, my final that's meal, right. get... dude, my favorite, dude, everyone is like, oh, the woke mafia is up my ass. It's like, bro, first of all, I think people are just clowning on him. Like, it's not even who the f is like, I mean, I'm sure there's people that are like mad at him, understandably, right? But like, for the most part, I think it's just people being like, dude, you're idiot like you're literally an idiot and also if there's a woke mob it's like shailene woodley dude his fiance is literally like a rad lib it's put in my cancel culture uh, casket i think i'd like to set the record straight on so many of the uh, blatant lies that are out there about myself right now um and i appreciate the opportunity to tell my side of the story on here first of all i didn't lie in the initial press conference uh, during that time it was a very, uh, you know, witch hunt uh, that was going on across the league where everybody in the media was so concerned about who was vaccinated and who wasn't and what that meant and who was being selfish and who would talk about it and what it meant if they said it's a personal decision, they should, shouldn't have to disclose their own uh, medical information and whatnot. And at the time, my plan was to say that I've been immunized. Um, it wasn't uh, some sort of ruse or lie, it was the truth. And I'll get into the whole immunization in, in a second, but uh, had there been a follow-up to my statement that I've been immunized, I would have responded uh, with this. I would have said, look. Um, Why didn't he just say, no, I'm not vaccinated. I, I already have the antibodies from COVID. And instead said, I'm just immunized. I wonder why he did that. Also ironic. Yeah, he's got real good immunity. This is why getting COVID is not like a foolproof method, okay? There are studies on this. I'm not 
you know, some sort of anti-vax flat earther. Um, I, I am somebody who's a critical thinker. Uh, uh -huh. You guys know me. I march to the beat of my own drum. I believe strongly in bodily autonomy and the ability to make choices for your body, not to have to acquiesce to some woke culture or crazed, you know, group of individuals who say you have to do something. Health is not a one size fits all. Bro, I swear to God, we are the dumbest nation on the planet, dude. We, we, we're just, we're done. It's awesome. I love motherfuckers who, who are like, I'm a critical thinker. That's why I learned everything from a podcaster who also claims he's a critical thinker. All of those like, you know, aunts and uncles on Facebook, all critical thinkers. We're a nation of independent thinkers who are critical thinkers. Who aren't anti-vaxxers, by the way. I've heard this so many times. It's like, I'm not anti-vaxxer except for this one. Mother what do you think anti-vaxxers in the past did? Okay? When the MMR vaccine came out, they said the exact same shit. They were like, I'm not an anti-vaxxer except for the MMR. It's like, no, dog. That's the point. That's how, like, you become an anti-vaxxer. Okay? Oh, for everybody. And for me, it involved a lot of study in the off-season, much like the study I put into Host and Jeopardy or the weekly study I put into Playing in the Game. I put a lot of time and energy and research and met with a lot of different people in the medical field to get the most information about the vaccines before making a decision. And in actuality, it was pretty easy in, in the beginning. I love when he says, like, I've done the research. And then later down the line, admits that his research revolved around asking Joe Rogan, a self-admitted dumb guy, okay? A self-admitted dumb guy who's an ape. Beginning to eliminate two of them, and it didn't involve going into the questionable history of some of their uh, criminal activities and fraud cases or any of that stuff. Huh. It was simply the fact that I have uh, an allergy to an ingredient that's in the mRNA vaccines. So on the CDC's own website, it says, should you have an allergy to any of the ingredients, you should not get one of the mRNA vaccines. So those two were out already. So my own I don't believe that at all. Okay. But let's say he's right. Then you get a medical exception. Why? Why didn't he just say, I got a medical, I, I have a medical exception. <laughs> Local healthcare provider and a partnership. Dude, it's literally free to not be a dumbass. It's zero dollars to not be a dumbass. And these guys are like, nah, I'm going to be a dumbass. The only option was Johnson & Johnson. At this time, in the early spring, I had heard of multiple people who had had adverse events around getting the J&J. Nothing that was no deaths or anything, but just some really difficult uh, times and physical uh, uh, abnormalities around uh, the J&J shot. And then in mid-April, the J&J shot got pulled for clotting issues, if you remember that, right? So the J&J shot was not even an option at that point. So then my options became, okay, what can I do to protect myself and my teammates? Oh, um, no. If there's not one of the big three options for me in my own body. And so I looked into and talked again to a lot of medical individuals. Turn it back. It'd be pretty funny. It was like... That's why I got Cinevac. Um, and professionals and found that there was an immunization protocol that I could go to to best protect myself and my teammates. And it was a long-term protocol uh, that involved, uh, you know, multiple months. And um, I'm very, uh, you know, proud of the research that went into that. Um, and Wait, so he didn't even get COVID? Like, I thought when he said he was immunized, I thought he at least, like, got COVID already. So he's like, I got the antibodies, brother. Which, by the way, that's not even immunization, for the record. Like, what he's saying, even if that was the case, if he got COVID and he thought he was immunized, it's not true. Obviously. Dude, oh my god. Uh, you know, the, the individuals that I met with, and we felt like it was what was best for me. It was not, again, something that the league didn't know about. The league was fully aware of it. Yeah, not only was the league fully aware of it, they tried to get a carve out for him. And now we know why. At the time, they literally, wasn't it Roger Goodell that tried to put a specific carve out in the language to say alternative treatments for COVID were also acceptable? That, now we know what the reason for that was.
He legit didn't even contact the NFL. No, but I'm almost certain. I'm almost certain that like they did know because I remember seeing, I remember reading an article like when he first got COVID, when people were, um, when people were talking about, like they denied, by the way, they denied it. But I know that they asked originally for a exception, uh, for, for an exemption or rather a specific carve out in the, in the statement about like what dictates, uh, like eligibility in the league, like medical eligibility. And they wanted to put in alternative treatment. Those reports ran counter to Rogers' own words, which simply imply that back in August he'd received that he'd received the vaccine. Yes, because Aaron had an appeal with the NFL. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, upon my return uh, to the Packers, and it was at that point that I petitioned them to accept my immunization status uh, as under their vaccination protocol. Now. Um, at the time, they had only had the, the big three was what they're going to do. And if you weren't uh, in the vaccinated category, you were uh, you were in a different category, which involved uh, some draconian um, measures and protocols that you would have to adhere to. Um, like what? Which, in my opinion, were not based on science. It we're more based in a shame-based environment to try and get as many guys to get vaccinated as possible so that the league looks better. Uh, to the rest of the world. That was the focus um, of these, you know, protocols, which I'll get into um, in, when, I, when I finish this diatribe here um, about the petition. So I petitioned the league. Uh, initially, they returned and said, no, you'll be in the unvaccinated category. And I also said, how come there's no exemptions for medical exemptions, uh, religious exemptions, pre-existing conditions? And okay. That's bullshit. There is no shot that they would not add medical exemptions. That is insane and also illegal. Okay. And if he truly just simply had a medical uh, exemption where his like actual doctor said, oh yeah, you can't take this vaccine because you're like deeply allergic to one of the things in it. Then no shot would the league be like, yeah, we, you can't take this vaccine. You, I mean, you have to take this vaccine. No fucking shot. He could literally sue the league, dude. And they basically said, look, those are all basically exempted, but you would be put in the non-vaccinated category. Uh, and I'll get into what that meant from a scheduling standpoint shortly, but uh, there wasn't any way of getting around that in their mind. So after they came back and said, no, you, you're unvaxxed, I said, okay, I'm going to appeal this. Um, and so we went through the process, uh, which was a multi-week process, um, where I asked them for time to gather information. I gathered over 500 pages of research um, on the efficacy of immunizations, uh, all the latest research um, surrounding my case, everything from mask wearing to, um, to uh, the efficacy of the vaccines and the duration of the, um, Bro. whenever motherfuckers are like, I did my own research. I'm like, okay, here we go. It's just so dumb. You didn't do your research, bro. Like you didn't, I'm sorry. You don't even have the qualification to do your research. Okay. Like you don't, you know, who did do the research, the researchers. And they're telling you to take vaccine. It's safe and effective. Everybody thinks they're a doctor or like more importantly than even a doctor, like a PhD epidemiologist or a PhD pharmacologist. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, why did all these people actually do their research when they could have just gone on Google and been like, all right, I found out. Antibodies, just all the latest research, right? That, that I was getting uh, from my medical team. And in that process, we had many conversations. I enjoyed the conversation with the league. It was, it was good sharing. But one in particular stood out when I knew I was not going to win this. I had a meeting and they said, one of the main docs said, it's impossible for a vaccinated person to get COVID or spread COVID. And at that point, I knew that, uh, you know, I was definitely not going to win the appeal. Okay. So here's the thing. I don't even know if the doctor said that or not, but that's wrong. You know what that shows, by the way? That shows that a single doctor could be wrong.
I don't know if anybody actually said that, but hey, guess what? You know what that shows? That sometimes doctors can be wrong. And that's precisely why you, if you were to actually do your own research, you would recognize that the entire body of work is significantly more important than a singular doctor and what they said. That's the do your own research argument. Not like hyper-focusing on like one guy who's like, uh, I don't know, like a neurologist or something. Being like, oh, well, actually, I did my own research and decided that despite the fact that this is outside of my field of expertise, that, uh, you know, the, the vaccine actually causes a penis shrinkage. Like, that's why you look at the, the consensus. Or he could just be lying about what the doctor said, because that's still. And it was, it was very shortly thereafter that denied, which we know now that's, that information is totally false that was given to me. Um, you know, my desire to immunize myself was what was best for my body. And that's why this is so important to me. Um, my medical team advised me that the danger I'd be in to get of an adverse event was greater than the risk of getting COVID. And Bro, you're sitting there with COVID, okay? You have not been immunized. <laughs> like, why are you still saying I was immunized? Like, well, I kind of don't know what you mean by that, if that's what you're saying. Like, are you, are you claiming that, like, what does immunization mean? Does it mean full-blown immunization? Does it mean that he will never get COVID because he demonstrably just got COVID? So clearly that's not even happening. But, oh yeah, here, by the way, QB uh, Aaron Rodgers is unvaccinated per me and Mike Garofalo. That's why he's out for Sunday versus the Chiefs. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers said he had been vaccinated. It's a personal decision. It's an interesting issue. He said he wasn't going to criticize teammates who weren't vaccinated. So, like, he lied about that, too. Why? What happens to these mother Dude, they just, like, they're like, nah, dude, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be this guy. Like, I am, I am falling on this sword, okay? This is the hill I am dying on. I, I love, I love not getting vaccinated. I am the king of not getting vaccinated. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna put my entire career on the line doesn't matter i'm gonna lie cheat steal do whatever the i can god forbid anything but taking this vaccine that like billions of people at this point have gotten I'm recovering so i made a decision that was an investment of my body you know i don't I'm not telling somebody to not get vaccinated or to get vaccinated i think you should do what's in the best interest of your body if you're scared of of uh of covid or if you have uh COVID morbidities then getting vaccinated is probably in your best option but if you have immunocompromised system or if you have pre conditions then make the decision that's in your best interest and that's what i did i made the decision that was in my best interest um and the the other part to it is that and i've talked about this on i think on the show before but the next great chapter in my life i believe is being a father and it's something that i care about a lot and to my knowledge there has been zero long-term studies around uh sterility or fertility issues uh, around the vaccines. So that was definitely something that I was worried about. Um, and I went through my mind. Now, obviously having, uh, you know, an allergy to an ingredient, it took me off of being able to, to take the mRNA anyway, but that, even if I didn't have that, that would be something that would give me a little bit of pause because we don't know what the long-term effects of these are. There's still clinical trials going on through 2023. So to just like, when people just say, oh, just get the jab, just get the jab. Well, um, first of all, everybody's body is different, number one. And second of all, there's a lot of things we don't know about this. So so that's, that's just one thing I really want to stress there. And again, the organization knew exactly what my status was. My teammates knew exactly what my status was. There was uh, nothing that was hidden. Um, yeah, except during for the, the time, immunization thing. Uh, of preseason was during the time of the appeal. I thought actually at various times I was going to win the appeal. Appeal court stays vaccine mandate on large businesses. Damn, he really is just spitting out all the misinformation. It's awesome. Pat is trying hard not to interject. I see, dude, why would you? This is quite literally an instance where like the best thing to do is just let the dude spit, okay? You are literally allowing someone to you're giving you're offering them a shovel to dig their own grave while simultaneously like you know doing the most profitable thing you can which is 
uh, we, we, like this podcast popped the fuck off. I'm watching it, dude. I don't know who the fuck Pat McAfee is. I would never watch Pat McAfee. I don't even like sports. And here I am watching it with 25,000 people because like that's, he did the, he did the smart thing. Um, uh, and I think that people have said I'd wear a mask during the preseason. Um, but oh, you mean the Rogan method? So that's the difference. If he agrees with him, then that's bad. Okay. If he turns around and he's like, "Hell yeah, dude, you're so right. Yeah, ivermectin is so good. You know what I mean? Like, then it's bad. But he's not even doing that. He's just like, uh, okay, uh, go on. I don't. I mean, some of the rules to me are not based in science at all. They're based purely in trying to out and shame people, like needing to wear a mask uh, at a podium when every person in the room is vaccinated and wearing a mask makes no sense to me. If you got vaccinated to you know, to protect yourself from a virus that I don't have as an unvaccinated individual, then why are you worried about anything that I can give you? And let me, let me hit on protocols now, because that's obviously been out there as well. I have followed every single protocol to a T, minus that one I just mentioned, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, but my, my daily routine is the routine of an unvaccinated person, which is I have to, you know, test early before, I do, you know, starting the season, vaccinated people test once every two weeks, non-vaccinated once a day, which again, that's not based in science at all. You know, you can have vaccinated people who actually carry and spread the virus, uh, not testing for two weeks and non-vaccinated people are the safest people in the building because we're the ones who are testing every single day and wearing masks the entire time. But instead we're being made to think that we're the dangerous ones, we're the super spreaders, uh, when in fact we're the most in touch with our body every single day. But these protocols that we have, we, we, uh, we've had to go through, I test every single day, 5 a.m. on uh, noon games as well, which I don't understand why 5 a.m., but 5 a.m. in the morning on noon games, uh, you test in the morning, and before you can go in the facility, you got to wait in your car uh, for 30 to 40 minutes. Wait, so more testing is good, and it's actually safe? How is he being like, does he not know he has COVID? Like, I know that's an anecdote to be like, well, I have COVID, and, I, and I'm saying right now that, like, being unvaccinated makes me more safe, but, like, does someone needs to tell Aaron Rodgers that he has COVID right now? So him like talking about this in the third person as though like, you know, being unvaccinated actually is like way better and it like protects you way better than like being vaccinated. It's like, but you have COVID. Like everything you say, you could just turn around and be like, but you have COVID currently. Like, especially because I mean, and that's like a super base level argument because like, you know, you can be pro vaccination and still get COVID. And there are things that he says that are like half truths, right? Um, for example, like that you can get the vaccine and still get COVID and spread COVID. Like he's not wrong. That is true. Except that shouldn't stop you from getting the mo the highest level of protection, especially when there's no, like there's no side effects to it. You know what I mean? No like reasonable, serious side effects or medical complications beyond like, you know, super 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 marginal instances that are less commonplace than like the actual long-term and short-term complications that arise from being unvaccinated and then getting covid so it doesn't really make sense and it's still give you the okay to go in non-vaccinated or vaccinated people test and just go right in uh so we had somebody test the other day vaccinated person tests goes in has breakfast test positive uh, and then, oh shit, bummer. He just had breakfast with five people. Um, wait in my car, mask every day in the facility. So I mask up every single day in the facility, physically distance from, from everybody else. I have major travel restrictions, so I can't leave the hotel. Um, can't have dinner with teammates, even though I tested negative that morning to even get on the flight. Um, the only people I see at the hotel are, uh, vaccinated people good catch happy uh, COVID hasn't caught your uh, instincts yeah only people i see at the hotel are vaccinated people Still got um it. but uh, i have to wear a mask the entire time i can't see anybody can't see anybody after the game 
uh, I work out off to the side in the weight room in a mask. Again, there's many studies about the efficacy of uh, masks uh, for workouts or the higher levels of CO2 inhaled during workouts. Wait, this is the thing I don't understand. Masks ineffective at spreading COVID, okay? They're like, masks don't prevent you from spreading COVID or getting COVID. But also, masks simultaneously stop you from getting oxygen. I hate working out in a mask. Let's be real, okay? It's bullshit. It is the worst thing. It is literally, it's fascism, okay? It's medical fascism. Sick and tired of it. So, I, I admit that they are a gigantic inconvenience. It's so stupid. But also, I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, there's actually scientific studies conducted uh, in my basement that... Uh, mask wearing prevents you from uh being able to uh breathe in or uh actually allows you to uh uh suck in uh co2 when you're working out it's like okay now it affects performance and body function um not allowed to use the sauna or the steam room i have to wear a yellow wristband at all times basically shouting to the world i'm uh, uncleaned and unvaxxed medical fascism what the fuck? dude it's a joke man i'm joking I'm exaggerating. I know that leftism means no jokes ever, but like when I say making me wear a mask while I'm working out is medical fascism, that's what is known as a joke. It's a joke by exaggerating uh, my actual stance, which is that it's an inconvenience. Sorry, I apologize. I will write a twit longer about how I joked when I should have never joked. Socialism means never joking, never laughing, never even under, like socialism means never joking. The less you've joked, the more you're socialist. Stalin literally never laughed famously. He's the most socialist of all. Um, and in this situation now, I'm 10 days off regardless of tests or symptoms. So I'm sitting here uh, two days in, uh, I had some symptoms Tuesday night, tested positive Wednesday morning. Not, didn't feel great yesterday. I'll get into what I've been doing, but I feel really good today. Um, this is Friday. Uh, it is. But 10 days off regardless, where a vaccinated person um, just has to have two back-to-back -back, uh, negative tests. When it comes to the science again for non-vaccinated, it came up last week because Alan Lazard was a close contact to uh, Devontae Adams, and Alan uh, is, is not vaxxed. And they yeah, obviously tried to cancel him for that, but they also didn't bring up the fact that he tested negative every single day. So just because he was close contact and not vax, this is what the league has done is they've made it. So didn't bring up the fact that he tested negative every single day. So just because he was close contact and not vax, this is what the league has done is they've made it, you know, hard for people, uh, you know, to, to have a decision because, well, well, you're, you know, you're a uh, close contact. That means you're out for five days. Not based on any science other than we're going to just keep this propaganda narrative going that unvaccinated people are the uh, most dangerous people in society. Um, so, uh, and again, can I ask know, some, can I ask some questions here now? Can yeah, I let me finish up here. One more got thing. it. Got it. Yo, maybe he did read 500 pages of anti-vaxxer bullshit he's you can hear him go through the pages first of all i'm surprised aaron Rodgers knows how to read okay let's be real i feel like you get hit in the head too many times you forget that okay you forget the the physical capability you you no longer can physically do that okay he did go to cal doesn't matter dude doesn't matter doesn't matter if you went to berkeley doesn't matter if you're a quarterback you get hit in the head that many times dude you're no longer a reader okay i'm sorry you forget certain things like critical thinking, which is he's demonstrating right now. Kind of like I forgot to run the top of the hour ad break. Okay. I did. I forgot to run the top of the hour ad break at the top of the hour. So I'm going to run it right now. If you no longer want to see the ads. If you want an ad free broadcasting experience, all you need to do is subscribe. You could do that for $5 or you could do that for free. But here's the ad break now. Here's the one minute ad break now. He doesn't have a degree from Cal. Gotta pee. Let's keep going with this. I just want to say, you know, that is what the media has been trying to do. They're trying to shame and out uh, and cancel all of us non-vaccinated people. Call us selfish. Yeah. I mean, that's the propaganda line too. Now you're selfish for making a decision that's in the best interest of your body.
Now, I've already spelled out, which I shouldn't have to, but I've already spelled out the issues in my own personal body and my own personal health, right? That, uh, you know, I have issues related to ingredients in the, in, in the, uh, in the mRNA vaccines. Uh, that the J&J got pulled, not to mention the numerous issues with the J&J vaccine to this day, um, that I went out and on my own paid for and did research and, and went out and did um, an immunization protocol that's been used. Uh, homeopathy has been around for centuries, and uh, the doctors that I consulted with have been doing this for decades, uh, the same type of stuff for children and and, and adults who have immunocompromised immunocompromisation, uh, they have pre-existing conditions or reasons that they cannot take traditional vaccines. Um, the league didn't offer any opportunity for, uh, you know, alternative uh, medicines uh, or treatments, as I'll get into. But, but, but um, I think the thing that, that is so disappointing is that it was not just that, but it was the coercion and the collusion, you know, of GM saying they're not going to they're not going to sign non-vaccinated players, and the coercion for player 54 through 90 who thinks if I don't make this squad that I'm on now in training camp, I'm and I'm not vaxxed. I, my, He's my spitting uh, anti-vax. He literally said on the Pat McAfee. He went on the Pat McAfee show and he said, "Hold on here, I'll." And take the noise get off he went on the pat mcafee show and he said i consulted joe rogan oh no on best treatments for covid <laughs> it's awesome dude let me watch football is my arena you go get ready we're late already yeah we are super late uh, andrew's yeah. there already oh i know i texted you at 11. Well, I was always, I thought we were going to go at two. Like, I thought we were going to leave at two. Homeopathy, those are not doctors. Yeah, he like lied to the NFL. When is Complex now starting? It started already. Go back. He said homeopathy was good. He's right, dude. You're fake. Dude, I'm telling you, goop. Goop for guys. Goop is go no- Go get ready, you degenerate. Sorry. Goop is no longer just for the ladies. It's for the guys too, and that's important. You're sexist. Um, so there wasn't ass. the environment. Right, these sit. workers in those same environments had no opportunity. Workers, <laughs> so it's happened all over the country. You're seeing these mandates for firefighter, firefighters and policemen and government workers who are saying, "Well, no, it's you know, what about my body, my choice? You know, what about making the best decision for my own circumstance?" And that, that, that again, that health is is not a one size fits all thing. I mean, that's the thing that's that's most disappointing. Look at our squad. We've had, you know, I'm the second uh, non-vax player to test positive. Pretty evident. I tested. Probably. Okay, one thing I'm gonna say though, to Aaron Rodgers' defense, that is a sick tombstone T-shirt. Doc Holiday, say when I'm your Huckleberry tombstone shirt points Aaron Rodgers for sure. Positive, being around a vaccinated individual. I mean, that's the majority of people I spend time with. Um, there's been dozens of individuals that work at the facility that are vaxxed that tested positive. So this idea that it's the a, pandemic of the unvaccinated it's just a total lie and i go back to like these two wait <laughs> wait what <laughs> some people with the vaccine got covid so the covid completely ineffective throw it out get rid of it of course Good questions for the uh you know, for this woke mob. Like, the exception is always the rule. Uh, number one, if the vaccine is so great, then how come people are still getting COVID and spreading COVID? Because there are new strains of the virus. Because everybody's not getting vaccinated. And unfortunately dying from COVID. Like, if the vaccine is so safe, then how come the manufacturers of the vaccine have full immunity. I gotta run that one back. What? Number one, if the vaccine is so great, then how come people are still getting COVID and spreading COVID and unfortunately dying from COVID? Like, if the va Bro, he looks so strung out. He doesn't even look like a NFL quarterback. 
He looks like a dude who hangs out in front of a 7-Eleven now. He looked like he looks like Jay from Jay and Silent Bob's like uncle who actually slings meth in, instead of snoochie boochies and weed, dude. The vaccine is so safe, then how come the manufacturers of the vaccine have full immunity? D does anybody know what he's saying there? If the vaccine is so safe, why do the manufacturers of the vaccine have full immunity? I don't even know what he means. Immunity from like, like legal immunity from taking it? Um, immunity from litigation. Oh. Oh, because it's a global pandemic. <laughs> so let's just step back and realize like this vaccine. I thought he meant immunity from the virus. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, probably because they took their own vaccine, dude. <laughs> I did I literally did not follow what he was saying. I literally I, did. I just got done with a hike and a workout and my brain is like, it's like one hamster pushing a wheel right now. Scene is revolutionary. The things that they're doing. However, we don't know a whole lot about it. And to just say that it's a blanket for all that ails you, in my opinion, is wrong and reckless. No, it's not a remedy for all that ails you. It's an it's a remedy for COVID. <laughs> and for the media out there taking shots at me, like you don't know my story, now you do. So Bro, they're taking shots at you because you bold face lied. Right? You you tried to convince everybody pretty knowingly that you had the vaccine. You knew what you were doing with your language, dude. Aaron Rodgers is not a dumb guy, right? People are not taking shots at you. There are plenty of, of NFL players who aren't vaccinated, right? There are plenty of NFL players that aren't vaccinated at this point. But none of them knowingly went on a, on a press conference booth and were like, yes, I have been immunized and like chose their words very carefully to try and deceive the media. Quit lying about me and... Personal health decisions, in my opinion, should be private. And they shouldn't have to be, like, gone through the ringer. It's weird. I mean, I hate to get into this, but, like, it's it's always been a story that Aaron Rodgers' family really wants nothing to do with him. And that always seemed very strange. But, like, his family always maintained that Aaron is, like, an impossible person to deal with. And now it's like, oh, okay. All right. This is making a little more sense now. You're an over-scrutinized by... You know, people who are just pushing their own type of propaganda on the people and, and ideals. You want to have a conversation about it? I'm more than willing to have a conversation about it. But bodily autonomy is a right. And the shaming and the outing that, you know, people seem to get off on so much of finding these people who, you know, oh my God, can you believe these crackpots who are not vaccinated? Everybody has their own story. Everybody has their own story and their own issues and, and their own reasons for doing things. But this shaming cancel society, that is wrong. And I made a choice that was in my best interest. You might respect it. You might hate it. But I bet you the same people that... Bro, dude, okay, listen. I hate that take. I hate that take so much. Because, like, on a very different level of, like, responsibility and, and, and all of those things, you can say the same thing about Henry Ruggs drunk driving, right? You don't know why Henry Ruggs drunk drove. He might have had to get to something very, very essential, but like you're putting people in danger, right? And especially like your teammates, right? If you're not vaccinated and you're convincing people that you're vaccinated, like that's, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's a very bad take on his part. And the other thing is like, you're a leader, you're, you're a leader, you're a leader of your team. You're a leader of the nation. You're one of the biggest faces of the NFL for you not to be vaccinated, for you to be out there saying like, it's going to make people sterile. Like, you know, the implications of that half of green Bay is going to come to your aid because football is the biggest thing in fucking green Bay, dude. Green Bay season tickets are sold out from now till the rapture. Green, isn't green Bay communist, dude. They are they're like owned by the people. What the fuck? I mean, they're cheeses. Um, but but no, no, pull it, pull it back. That's why I was pulling you away from the microphone. Oh, it's too like, loud. Yeah, the gain is high as fuck already. But you uh, can't stop a suck on that thing. You love you love suckling on that. I mic. suck on it, dude. On the Mikey. Um, 
Okay, we are gonna we're gonna head on down to fucking. Wait, hold on. One thing I would like to remind everybody that I think is f hilarious. I don't know why I think this is funny, but Pat McAfee now is like the bad boy of like NFL commentators. I mean, look at the guy, right? He looks half Jersey Shore and half like like Anderson Cooper. I don't know where he f came from. This dude was a punter. For those of you who don't know football, this dude punted. He punted the football. Now he's punting interviews, but into the sky. I don't know how he became the bad boy of the NFL. Like, he gets to say, like, shit, piss. Here's my really edgy take on football. You know why? He was a punter. You know why, dude? Less, less kicks to the head. Yeah. Less kicks to the head. That's it, dude. You, you save in the NFL, your future career or, like, your opportunities are determined by... How many times people kick you directly in the f***ing dome? The less you are kicked in the dome, the higher likelihood that you can have a viable career post-NFL, the, the better your takes are. Were you sad when White, Mike White got hurt on Tuesday, Thursday? Dude, he was so sad. Will was devastated. Wait. Mike, Mike White getting hurt was like the day that that one of my friends at school told me Santa Claus wasn't real. It hurt. It was like all that hope that I had for the future, that the world around me wasn't hard all the way through, was taken from me in one fell swoop. One brutal, brutal swoop. He threw a touchdown. He did this. I was like, yay! Santa! And then I wake up that one night, 1.30 a.m., I'm sneaking down to see Santa Claus. I see my dad in his robe, putting socks in a stocking, and I'm like, that's not Santa! I start doing the math. I realize one day I'm gonna die. I have to pay taxes. <laughs> hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>